sometimes you're going to want to do something that's going to take a little bit longer than you want to have your user wait for, and you want that thing to keep going on in the background even if the user doesn't stick around. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Answers. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Hangfire. Yes, so Hangfire is a, oh, let me just pull it up here. Hangfire, do, do, do. Um, see, oh, we'll just GitHub that bad boy right there so you can get this on um, on GitHub. Uh, if you want to have a look at the code and the source, you can install it as a NuGet package. What it is, though, is a way to basically create fire and forget messages that are serialized, stored, um, so that it's got some level of resiliency. And then uh, in, in that, from that queue, those jobs that you put in the background are just processed one by each. Or there's also a level of parallelism that you can set up with it as well. So um, what we're going to do is today we're just going to take our, our, um, uh, the app that Dave's been uh, putting together with uh, some time related things. We got some Christmas uh, day, some Boxing Day. Now, do I have a way here to add additional holidays, Dave? Yeah, if you go over to view sample, there's a okay. there's ability to add there. Just... Okay, so let's add. Um, we're gonna add a couple of more here because I just want to make it a little bit more interesting when we go to do the the processing. We'll do New Year's Day. And we will add Valentine's Day. That's an important one. Made up holiday. Yeah. Well, my, my wife and I actually don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, and then we can do one more. I think Mother's Day comes in. That's May, right? So we'll just call it May 9th is Mother's Day. Let's see if you have that. Okay. Oh, that's oh, wait, uh, that's not working. That's not working. Um, okay. Darn. That's it's not okay. a very we'll, good app. <laughs> we'll 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 have a look at that later. Maybe it just gets it just works for the first one, and that, that's okay. You know, some sometimes you just need it to work just one time. And let's add that one. Perfect. So the first one works. Um, <laughs> some cleanup stuff, but hey, pay pay no mind. So now we've got these. Um, these holidays here and maybe you're thinking hey i would like to create an image for each one of these holidays um but you might have the next i don't know say the next three years of holidays there and taking an building an image that's the size of your desktop for a background or something is a, is a long i'm i'm really stretching here um but th the idea is, is that we might want to do something where we actually go and create some jobs so i have a class called a holiday image builder and um what this is this basically does is it's got access to the database via the constructor so it, it takes advantage of the di that already works in um uh in asp.net core and after it gets the context stores that to a local then we've got um, to a, a field here, we've got a method called create image and it takes a holiday ID. Now, the idea with any background processing is you want to keep your image, your um, messages as small as possible. So I have a, a little bit of code here uh, that I've got to uh, demonstrate and it doesn't actually build an image. It just, I'm doing this really high performance method called sleep off of thread um, that will just kind of give us i I'm going to take a random time and we're going to, we're going to dump that in. Um, and because I'm taking a single parameter, I can, this job will be queued and it will, I'll be able to look up my holiday from the public holidays. Then I'm just going to basically get a random number. And um, after that's done, I'm going to say that the image was created. So I've got this, uh, um, this job effectively that's going to build these images for me. Now I'm going to go back to my index. I'm just going to uncomment a little uh, bit of code here. And in my controller, I've created a uh, post at the create images endpoint, and it just redirects it back to the main endpoint. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. What I actually want to do though, I have um, in this particular case, I'm going to actually get the entire list of um, of images because I want I want to have a good amount of work uh, to support in there. But before I do that, let's actually let's actually do something else here. We're just going to run this and we're going to look at 
what happens at startup. The first thing that we need to do is I've already created a database, so I'll pop over to um, our my database here, and it's just create database. It doesn't create its own, so which is probably good because you don't want to be you don't want it to be going and doing that. You want to be able to control where it's being stored. That can go into an existing context that you already have in your application, or you can put it into a background processing database on the same server or on a different server. And there's other ways that you can do this as well. There's other options for um, where you store the job information. And then we're going to add Hangfire to our services uh, collection in startup and we just have to do some configuration on it so there's a lot of these I haven't dug too far into yet these are just the recommended um, configuration from the sample site and it tell we're configuring it to use the SQL server storage option and I'm reading my um, connection string from app settings and then I just pass in the kind of default recommended pieces. I'm adding Hangfire Server. Now this is what actually runs in the background at startup. Um, there's a, a singleton that runs back there and it just keeps itself running. And this can be deployed to Azure, it can be deployed to IIS. Um, uh, you can uh, self-host it if you want to in something. I think there's examples out there of Hangfire inside of Top Shelf, so you can get it running in a Windows service and things like, like that. And then, what we're finally doing as part of the setup is I'm using um, part this middleware that they've got for the dashboard, and I am adding an endpoint for the dashboard. And at startup, I'm just calling this background jobs dot in queue. So this is how we tell Hangfire to do work. We in queue a job. Now right here, it's uh, parameterless. Um, anonymous function here, but basically what it's doing is it's just calling console.writeline. And what Hangfire is going to do is it's actually going to serialize all of the information required in order to instantiate the, any classes that are required, and then to call the method with the parameters that you are trying to invoke. So when we call this in queue method, this console.writeline doesn't actually happen it gets scheduled to happen and it gets stored in this case um, in the database. And now when I go back to my, um, uh, actually I'll just, because I'm doing this right here, this in queue, when the application starts up, it's actually going to in queue this work and this job is going to execute behind the scenes before I even see anything on the website. So I'm just gonna run it again, hit control F5 here and pull this up. And um, a couple of things have happened. I'm gonna go to my output and we should see from debug, do, do, do. Am I going to get it in debug? We should see hello from Hangfire. You can search that console, I think, if you do a uh, control F. Hangfire. Let me go make check that message. Uh, hello world from Hangfire. OK. Well, there's not going to be a lot of hello worlds in there. And it is not in there. That's OK. Um, I, where should it be outputting? Console. Oh, it's outputting to the console. So, well, that so should probably be probably the web server one. So Under. Or on a below debug. Right there. OK. Maybe. And do a find on it. Hello world from Hangfire right there. Lit. Awesome. Thanks, guys. OK, so going back to the application, there's another really cool thing that's happened behind the scenes. First of all, let's go back to. Um, the databases here. I'm just going to do a refresh, and we can see we've got um, holidays background process, and that's the one that I created just as we were getting started. Um, but it's got some tables here, and one of the interesting ones is jobs. So I'm just going to pull the first thousand rows here. You can see I've run the the job a couple of times now just by hitting Control F5, and that gets stored up here. It's not as complex as um, some of the other work um, that we could do, but it kind of gives you a little bit of information about how it's serializing the invocation data. So it's got a type that it's trying to use and how it's going to, you know, um, the method that it's going to call and then any of the parameters that were um, that were put in there. It also carries a state. And one of the interesting things we wired up that dashboard is I can actually go in here and go to uh, slash hangfire. And we get a real time graph running of uh, all of the jobs that are getting processed. So now I'm just going to refresh this. I've got my button and 
let me have a look at my controller. I do not have anything scheduled, but let's just schedule this first one, this create images for, uh, maybe I should do a, well, it doesn't really matter. What's in the database? We should probably get real data to get started. Public holidays, select top rows. So I do have a one, which is New Year's Day. Okay, so I'm just gonna create an image for that. And by create an image, I just mean I'm gonna be um, outputting to the debug window. Okay, so go back we over here. To, do we need to await that in queue call? Um, you don't, it's actually not, um, uh, it, it returns immediately. Um, and the interesting thing is that it actually returns a, a job identifier so that you can actually start to chain calls together. So when that one's done, do this one, you get a parent ID back. And mm -hmm. so then you can say, if I need to go and generate an image and then I need to upload it to blob storage, you can actually do those things separately. Although, um, actually that's probably not in the spirit of how they want this to work. Um, uh, unless you can identify, like if you're saving it locally to your server, whatever, it was just a, a random thing anyways. But the, the idea is, is that uh, we, we, you can continue on um, by getting the um, parent ID that comes back from this job and that comes back immediately. Um, so now just going to the site, I'll hit the um, button here and, oh, I don't have a debugger attached, but let's flip back over here. We can see that this, um, method just got invoked. We can go back into our jobs and have a look here. There's a number of them that have been created. So this one took 3.98 seconds, which makes sense because I had that random uh, build in there. But if I go back to the dashboard, maybe we want to see something uh, a little bit more interesting happen. So I could do something in here like, um, uh, let's see, var images equals context dot public holidays dot uh, to list async and we'll just wait that and then I can for example for each uh, image in collection oh in images sorry that thing but we're going to pass in image dot id now there's other things we can do to optimize that but um i think that there's for example there's a bunch of older holidays in there that you've got filtered out already um dave or whatever so those ones are all going yeah. to be going because i'm not fil doing any filtering here but the point is we're going to add a bunch of work so i'm going to just set a breakpoint on here and we'll get the app running we'll pull the dashboard up Some work being done. And when I hit create images, uh, I guess I didn't really need to see that, but we can see how many we've got in this anyways. So there's 15 here. So I'm just gonna head back over to this guy over here. And we can see some work being done in the background here as it ramps up and completes the, the jobs that we queued. So I see six cool. and Six and six and two is 14. I guess that's um, all that we had, but uh, there we go. Each of those ones taking a different amount of time and multiple pages, and et cetera, et cetera. So um, in a nutshell, uh, you're gonna um, install a couple of packages for Hangfire. You are going to uh, set up a database configure Hangfire to store in the database. And then uh, from that point forward, all you have to do to get that stuff working in the background is call um, in queue on this back down job, uh, background jobs, which I did fail to mention, but it's something that you can inject after we've added it to the services. Um, you can inject that into any of your controllers or something that you're doing a mediator or whatever the case may be. There we go. Yeah, that's fantastic. There's a lot of other functionality, I think, in Hangfire for people who are interested in it. Yeah, we can probably explore this a little bit uh, in more detail. One of the things that I really like is the idea of batches, which gives you an atomic operation. Um, it, it really means that you have to be focused on doing work um, 
uh, in such a way that it can be undone. Um, there's a lot of, there's, a, I shouldn't say a lot of best practices. There are some best practices in hang fire that kind of mirror what um, you, you want to see in any time you're doing background processing. But because the thing is going to be going to the queue and it will, it may be attempted multiple times, any of the work that you do, the outcome from that should be the same every time based on the inputs. Um, that way, if the work is created, you know, it, or if the work is done more than once um, or it fails part way and there's multiple retries and it has to do, do uh, restart it, that it's not going to fail. And um, so there's some design considerations when you start working on, on things like that. Um, but there's a, um, um, yeah, there's some interesting concepts such as batching that, um, that are really starts to make a, a um, an attractive option for um, building some background tasks into your app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course you can do scheduling and delayed and stuff with this too. Yeah, and I, you know, this I actually came into this because I was I'm working on an app that's being deployed locally, and we don't have access to Azure, so um, I didn't really have a good thing other than um, we needed to. One of the constraints was that we needed to stay inside of the existing deployment model, which means. I'm going to IIS and that's my option. So that's where this was born from and it, it helps you get out of some constraints if you have um, if you find yourself into them. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, it's been around for a long time, so it's quite stable, I think, and very fully featured. Yeah, quite stable, community, lots of con community contributions and all those things. We'll put some links in the um, uh, show notes and I'll, uh, I can I can probably put, just put this onto a branch for um, this project and we'll push it out onto the repo for the monsters as well. Sounds good. Great. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on this episode of the ASPNF Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody next episode. Cheers. Bye. Bye.